Perfect. Uh, my name is Yulia Dutza. I am one of the authors for the Geometric Deep Learning tutorial. And I'm originally from Romania and currently doing a PhD, third year in University of Cambridge, when I mostly work on hypergraph neural networks, which is kind of on the same line with the tutorial. Hi, everyone. I'm Victor. I'm from Belgrade, Serbia, and I finished my undergrad last year at Cambridge, and I will be starting a PhD there this October. And so let's start with this tutorial. The agenda for tonight is to go to a gala dinner, but first we have a tutorial to go through. And the tutorial has three parts. So first, we will be looking at how to build GNN models completely from scratch and how to train them with more or less just pure PyTorch. After that, we will switch to PyTorch Geometric, which is a higher level library for working with GNNs. And finally, we will see what happens when things go wrong with GNNs such as with our squashing, and how to fix this with graph rewiring. And in the end, if you have time, we also have some bits about positional encodings. But first things first, so we are building GNNs from scratch. And to start, we'll just recap some theory from the yesterday's lecture. So the main paradigm about GNNs is that we have these messages, MIJ, that are being sent from node J with embeddings XJ to node I with embeddings XI. And depending on how we construct these messages, we end up with different flavors of GNNs, such as convolutional, attentional, or message passing in increasing order of complexity. And the convolutional networks are the most simple. So here we are just multiplying by a constant. And this constant only depends on the graph structure, so only on the adjacency matrix. And you have a diagram of that on the right. And you will start your tutorial by implementing a GNN layer called the graph convolutional network. Uh, here, these constants are derived from the node degrees in the graph. After that, you will run some tests, or I should say create some tests, to make sure that this network satisfies permutation invariance and equivariance. Then we will also work with attentional networks. So here we are still multiplying things by a constant, but now uh, these constants also depend on graph features and not just on the, on the adjacency matrix. And here you will implement something that will look a lot like the graph attention network by Valishkovic and others here. And after this, we will also look at what is different when you're training GNNs compared to when you're training something more classical like, say, MLPs. And there are two things that we will work with. So first, we'll focus on sparsity. In order to save memory, we will have to work with sparse data structures, and we will use some primitives, such as the one on the left, called scatter sum. We will explain how this works in the CoLab. And you will use these primitives in making sparse layers and sparse networks. And then we will also explore how to do batching on graphs, because the issue is that graphs are very unstructured data structures. And you cannot just take them and stack them along a new axis to make a batch because that won't be a tensor anymore. And so what we do instead is that we take these graphs and concatenate them to create one mega graph and then run message passing on that. And you will implement some bookkeeping to make sure this works well. And the goal of this first part is to show you that there is nothing magical going on about GNNs and you will learn how they work from scratch. And then after that, we will switch to PyTorch Geometric, which is just a much nicer way to deal with them. Julia? Yeah. Yeah, so as Victor told you, like the first part is basically from scratch, which is very good for learning, but it's not amazing when you try to just implement something fast and try just to test things around. And luckily there is a library for this called PyTorch Geometric, which contains a little bit of magic, so things are not as obvious as before, but you will see that it's very easy to use. So if you remember from yesterday in the lecture, basically most of the GNN follows a three-step pattern. You first have like a message for each pair of two nodes that are connected in the graph, you create a message. Then you have the aggregate step in which for each node, you aggregate all the messages from its neighborhood. And then you have the update. You take this aggregated information and the representation of the node and just combine them into a, a new representation. And luckily, PyTorch Geometric follows exactly this framework. Basically, all you need to do to create a PyTorch Geometric object is to inherit from that message passing class. 
and then implement three functions, the message, the aggregate, and the update. The message will take exactly the source and the destination and try to create a message out of it the way you want to implement in your, uh, in your model. Aggregate will just take these messages and you decide how to aggregate them. It can be a maximum, it can be an average, a sum. And then update will take this aggregate information and the previous representation of the node. And again, you will decide how to combine them. You concatenate them, you use an MLP, whatever. And then in the forward, all you need to do is uh, call the propagate, which will do the magic. We'll know how to use the message aggregate and update to just combine them into a GNN model. And in the first example, just to get used with PyTorch Geometric, uh, you implemented already from scratch the graph attention network. Now you will do the same things, but using the PyTorch uh, Geometric model. Uh, and you will basically need to implement the message, the update, and uh, the aggregate function for this uh, graph attention. And then you will have a little bit of uh, a different flavor of graph attention network called Sparse Graph Transformer, in which all you need to change is instead that scalar that you are using in graph attention, instead of being just a linear projection into a scalar, it will be a dot product similarity. So basically, you'll have to implement two models in Python geometric. One will be the graph attention network. The other one will be a graph transformer. And then we'll move to some, something a little bit uh, more tricky and more hot topic in GNS, over squashing. Basically, the problem of over squashing is if you want to send messages from very far away nodes in the graph, then obviously you will need a number of message passing at least as, uh, um, as big as the distance between the two nodes. Otherwise, the two nodes will not communicate with each other. But the problem in GNN is that when you increase the number of layers, the number of nodes in the neighborhood increase exponentially. So if you have uh, k layers, then it will be exponentially in k number of nodes in that neighborhood. And that is problematic for GNN because like we are using with a finite, quite small dimension of features, and you'll try to combine all of those information from the exponentially growing neighborhood in this small fixed representation. And this is what we call in GNN over squashing. Basically, we are losing the information from the node that we care about just because it got combined with so many other uh, nodes along the way. And to understand better uh, this over squashing problem, we are gonna work with a synthetic data set. Basically, it will only contain three graphs, Oop, three as in the tree structure of the graph. Um, and this graph will have as feature only features in the leaf of the uh, nodes. Basically, we'll have a key and a value in each one of the leaves. And then the root will only have a key. The value for, uh, will be always zero. And what the model will need to do will be to receive the information from all the leaves, uh, send it to the root, and then the root will pick uh, the node that contains the same key as itself and return the value associated with it, this key. In this example, for example, it's gonna receive all the information from the leaves. It's gonna see that uh, his, uh, its key is two. The leaf with the key two is two one, so I will want to return one in this case. Basically, what you will need uh, practically to do will be to adapt the model that you have before that uh, predicts something from the entire graph to predict something just from the root. And ideally, you'll see that the model will not be able to learn exactly because of this over squashing problem. As we are having deeper and deeper trees, it will be hard to send all the information from the leaves to the root. And we'll try to fix this problem. Basically, the first thing will be just run this GNN adapted for our problem and see that it's gonna fail, and then try to uh, fix it. And because we know that the problem with over squashing happens when we need to send messages between very far away nodes in our graph, one simple solution would be, let's just try to re re uh, rewire the graph such that we don't have this kind of long distance nodes that communicates. Rewire means just draw other edges, remove some edges, basically modify the topology of the graph. And the simple way to do this is just connect all the nodes with all the nodes. In this way, I'm sure that I'm not gonna have far away nodes in my graph, because all of them are one hop, one hop from my node. Uh, the problem with this approach is that we will have lots of edges, as you can see, even if, if in this small example. And also, like, it can be numerically problematic. Like, efficiency is bad because we send lots of messages. Numerically is bad because we aggregate lots of messages, so on and so forth. But we still ask you to do this. <laughs> and hopefully, we will obtain a little bit of improvement on our over squashing model. And an alternative to this, like, fully connected rewiring is to use another type of uh, graph that has very nice property called expander graphs. Basically, the expander graphs are some nice graphs that 
they are not as dense as the fully connected, as you can see in the example, but also has the property that the diameter of the graph is quite small. So we know that the diameter means like the maximum distance in the graph. So it's a special class of graphs such that the maximum distance in the graph is small, but the graph is still uh, sparse. And basically what we will do is first we will modify our GNN uh, instead of using the original graph topology to use the fully connected graph, and then we will modify uh, to use the expander graph that don't worry, we implemented already the code to generate an expander graph. All you need to do is modify it in the code to actually use that topology. And those will be like the first three parts of the tutorials. Uh, it's already quite a lot, so we consider this positional encoding bonus. Don't worry if you don't manage to end up here, but the tutorial will still be online, so you can do it uh, in your free time after the summer school. Basically, the problem with the rewiring is that, okay, we rewire the graph such that we don't have over squashing problem, but we lost all the information about the graphs. Like, we just draw other edges, we don't take into account the graph anymore. And for our synthetic problem, it was okay, because our output doesn't depend on the graph topology, but in real world, probably it's much harder to actually obtain any good results when you just ignore the graph. So how can you uh, avoid over squashing but still maintain the information about the graph topology? One option is via positional encoding. Basically, positional encoding just means Let's take some features that depend on the graph topology and append them as input features. Be and we have two types of uh, positional encoding. We have the absolute positional encoding, which means we take some input that is not level and uh, some features that is not, not level and append it to our original features. Or relative positional encoding where these features are at the edge level, not at the node level. For the node level features, you can think of for example, the degree of the graph, it's one type of quantity that takes into account the structure. The eigenvectors associated with the Laplacian is what we are using in the lab. Don't worry if you don't understand what it means, but trust me, it's some kind of information that encodes lots of things about the graphs, like connected component information and lots, lots of other interesting stuff. And uh, for the uh, edge level uh, features, the simplest way would be just add a feature saying this is an original edge this is a fake edge, and that will preserve all the connectivity. What we are using uh, in this tutorial is a bit more powerful. We are using shortest path. Basically, each edge has associated a number, saying in the original graph, the shortest path between these two nodes was three or four or whatever. What you need to do, most of the code for actually generated the positional encoding, both for the node level and for the edge level, is provided. All you will need to do is take this information and modify the GNN model to actually uh, use it in the message or in the update, depending uh, on the model. And yeah, this all for the tutorial. I hope it's kind of clear, but we will be around to answer the question. And also, feel free to email us after the summer school if uh, you are interested to do it and still have questions. Thank you.